When we're in charge of our kids, crazy things happen. This is Mr. Beardo from Chillicothe, Ohio. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. This episode is brought to you by Aura Brush. 90% of bad breath comes from a dirty tongue, unless you use this. I have such a squeaky clean tongue. I eat off of it. <laughs> That's so clever, Rhett. Pick them up at uh, AuraBrush.com or Walmart. CVS or Walmart. CVS, Walmart, you know, anywhere. The nearest big store. Actually, just CVS and Walmart. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. You're a human being. I hope. You are, are special. Some, some animals watch this. You can accomplish things today that up until this point you had not accomplished. This is motivational. It's up to you. And we're just here to give you a bright spot to send you in the right direction. You're like Tony Robbins. But Tony Robbins, he talks like this. It's like the man has a very powerful voice. We just, we just want to help. We want to be a part of your routine that helps. Help us help you, people. So this is like therapeutic now? Yeah, I think this so. Is, yeah. It's therapeutic for our relationship, Next time you go to the psychiatrist or just your counselor and you tell him you've got some issues... He's going to prescribe watching Good Mythical Morning every day. That, that's the new thing. If you're a psychiatrist or a counselor out there, we just encourage you. You Feel free to diagnose people or prescribe people this show. I mean, I don't know how that would fly with a medical community. Should I not be saying this at all? No, this is good. Diagnose them with a GMM deficiency. Yeah, there you go. This weekend uh, was interesting. Awesome. Yeah, it was. Our, yeah. our wives, they're both be beautiful, as we have established previously. <laughs> uh, but we love them for all types of reasons of how they are as, as, as internal people, too. They went away together. Well, internal people? They went to a conference uh, with some other women. We were not invited. It was a women's conference. We were invited to keep our kids in their absence. And so they left, uh, they left on Friday, and then they came back Saturday night. So we had our, our children. I had my children. Two of them. You had your children. Three of them. Three. I, I know. I know I'm blowing your mind, people. Yes, I have at least three children. No, I have only three children. And we kept them for 24 hours, and now we're reporting back. Mom's away! It's kind of like bombs away, almost in a literal sense, that mom leaves and then bombs away! Mom's away! Well, the kids are falling everywhere, just going nuts. But your kids are... Everyone's alive. I mean, we, we're, we're here today... Yes. Everyone is still alive. Spoiler alert, my kids are still alive. But that is pretty much my mentality. I mean, when Christy leaves town, if it's one night, I think the most that I've kept my kids without the assistance of my wife was maybe three nights in I, a row. I think you're your wife's assistant. I don't think that she's your assistant. Let's, yeah, that, let's just that's be, true. Let's be clear about that. W without me being her meager assistant. Yes. Thanks for the clarification. 100% agree with that. I definitely think that my mentality is one of survival. If I can survive and keep all three of these children alive. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Anything else is gravy. You know, if, if, if they grow as people, <laughs> if they have experiences that when they're older, they'll talk about and how much they love me and how they became more of a human being, all of that's gravy. I think that's all our wives expect, honestly. You because know, they know us. Is the house intact? <laughs> Are the kids alive? Well, it, success. Speaking of keep the house intact, and one of my strategies because I like to keep things neat, and when Christy comes back, I like for things to be clean, and so she doesn't have more work when she gets back. Come to a clean home. Yeah, she needs to come back to that. You know, that's my little treat to her. The only way I can do that is to get the kids out. Now you've got a backyard, but I really don't have a backyard. There's not much grass back there, so I had to take them to a park. Mm -hmm. My strategy was get them to a park. Got them there. They had a pond with geese and ducks. And for 25 cent, you could get like a satchel of seed. This is a good plan. And the kids were, they were just loving it. Oh, yeah. I was like, yes. Kids love birds. I'm in gravy zone yeah. here. Mm -hmm. You know, these kids are going to remember Life feeding. Lifelong memory. Uh, feeding ducks and geese and whatnot. Yeah. You know, I said, oh, here's a bag. And you know, it's only a quarter. Here's another one. My kids were amazed. I bought two of some. Oh, wow. Yeah. The cheapest man in the world is buying bird seed left and right. <laughs> yeah, my kids. Are passing like, it out to the Whoa. kids. Dad, that is crazy. He spent 50 cents. Um, but Lando's been coming down with something. He's almost two years old, mm -hmm. and uh, he's coming down with a sickness, and he started to get the snotty, runny nose thing. Yep. 
But that I, that could not keep me in the house. Oh yeah, take him to the park. Expose him to birds. <laughs> so he's got he's got the snot running everywhere. And when you're a kid that age, you don't really know many of the techniques to blow your nose or to snort and spit or any of that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. hawking a loogie is not in the vocabulary yet. No, well, or in the repertoire. He probably has twelve words in his vocabulary. <laughs> That's not one of them. So it'll run and he'll rub. It'll run and he'll rub. It'll run and he'll rub. So, and I mean, I can't sit there and wipe his nose all day. It's going to chafe. It's going to be bad for him. It's going to be bad for everybody. So I just admit defeat. He's going to have a, he's going to be a snot nosed kid out here in public. Who cares? The birds don't care. So we're feeding bird seed and there's a, there's a fence so that the kids can't go into the pond. That's, that's probably my saving grace. Right. <clears throat> but they're throwing bird seed through the fence to the to the ducks and the geese. And then I kind of sit back on a bench. I'm taking a rest because this is exhausting. Being Don't a mom it. and a dad, stinking exhausting. Yeah. And they're up there feeding the wildlife. And I'm back and I see another two-year-old come up. Uh-oh. His mom gives him a bag of seed and uh, grabs a big handful. And the first thing he does is, instead of looking at the verse, he turns, looks at Lando, point blank range, he thought it was a bird. I guess. Or he was trying to assert dominance. And I run up there. Lando's not crying. He's just kind of looking stunned. And he turns to me. Birdseed beard. <laughs> it stuck to the snot. Everywhere. <laughs> it was just like, wow. That's amazing. I didn't, I didn't get a picture. Because did, did, you, did you hold him up to the geese at that point and let them well, I was, peck at his face? I was laughing. The other mom was laughing. Lando was just like. Stunned. Stunned. And the other kid. I was definitely thinking we should give him a spanking, but I didn't tell his mom that. I was laughing. It was hysterical. My other kids were laughing. And then I started to realize he, 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 his life might be in danger. I look at these geese, and all the geese and ducks were lined up. If, there, if it wasn't for that fence, he would have been attacked. He's like one of those pine cones that you put peanut butter on, <laughs> yeah. and then you stick the, the bird right. seed to it. Right. Your son's face is essentially that. It's like a caramel apple that you that you... That you roll in crushed nuts. If you wouldn't, if there were squirrels around, it would have been a problem too. Yeah, that's true. So I, I raked it off, and he survived. Well, congratulations. I I had a similar experience. I my philosophy is get through the day, and and I do have a backyard, and it's fenced in, and I feel that they're kind of safe back here. You know, they can't climb out. They're contained. I've got a seven year old and a three year old, and I kind of just say, boys, just go outside and you know amuse yourselves. And uh, my three year old, while wow, you do what? Watch TV. <laughs> so I, uh, my uh, TV. <laughs> my three-year-old is in a pull-up. Now he is he is potty trained, but he sleeps in a pull-up just because we don't want to deal with him peeing in his pants during the night. And it happens like once in a blue moon. Mm-hmm. I don't know how often that is, but you know, fairly often. Wherever there's a blue moon presence, he pees on it. And I, uh, so, but what my wife does is, you know, once my son gets up, she, my my children, she dresses them. She, you know, takes she the, parents. Them. She takes the pull off. And, but I'm just like, he's fine, you know. So I just kind of send him in the backyard, and a, an hour or so goes by. <laughs> now we got a pretty muddy backyard uh, because there's one spot that kind of just never dries out. And so I go outside and I see my three year old. Uh, he is stripped down to just his pull up. So this is like a three year old in a diaper, essentially is what it looks like. Uh, he is covered with mud and dirt that is dried and kind of caked in different places. He has on a Superman cape and he is holding a sword. <laughs> and he is standing on a chair, holding it up. And I come outside, and that's not a real sword. We don't have like a samurai <laughs> sword. This is like a plastic sword, you know. I do have some sense. And so he's standing on the, the chair, and I come out and he says, I am Superman pirate Power Ranger Captain America. What do you say to that? Good, son. I'm proud of you. Yes, you are. And, uh, and all day long. And then I thought, well, okay, I'm definitely gonna have to clean these kids up before Jesse gets home. You know, I can't let her see him like this. And the two, seven- two words, garden hose. <laughs> well, he took a bath later on. But then they came inside, and uh, <laughs> Shepard was—he's the young one. Shepard said, "Daddy, I'm hungry." And I, and I kind of looked around. I was like, hmm. Uh, and I saw this big bucket of pistachios. You're in your own house, yet you're foraging. <laughs> and oh, so, son hungry, me foraging home. I put him in the living room, and I set the pistachios down. And then I, and then I actually, I came out here and started writing a song because I was like, I got, I, I need to write, I need to write a song. I got to take advantage of this time I've got. 
And so I spend about 30 minutes and I go back inside and uh, they, they think- <laughs> So you're inside, you put them outside. You're outside, you put them inside. Yeah. I hope Jesse's not watching this. And so I go back inside and it's like they're treating the, uh, they're treating it like a Lone Star Steakhouse where you can eat the peanuts and you just throw the Still shell on, on the, the ground. Yeah. There is pistachio shell all over the living room. I'm like, guys, I mean, I thought I'd trained you well enough <laughs> to like put them in the trash can. So at that point I was like, I started questioning my parenting that, skills. Well, that's what Power Rangers, Superman, Kanto, whatever he is. I thought, yeah, I thought <laughs> Superman, Power Ranger, Captain America, Pirate could take care of himself. Lone Ranger. You know, he's got an incredible vocabulary. And uh, so anyway, I clean him up. I, I clean the house up. I put him in the shower. Success. Uh, we had a great time. I mean, high five. The high, kids, my dad, high five. Kids got to take care of themselves every once in a while. Moms just baby them. The moms know? are, no, seriously. No. Though. Okay. Moms are stinking awesome. It's weekends like this that make us appreciate our wives and the fact that they spend a lot more time with these kids than we do. And you know what? They're a lot better at it than we they're are. Not, they're not just alive, they're becoming greater human beings. When I go into the house later on today and it's time to eat dinner, I bet there won't be pistachio shells everywhere. My kids will be dressed, they will be relatively clean, there will be like a plate, there will be an actual meal, there will be like a fork and a drink. You know what I'm saying? There, it, it, there'll be like a system that's being applied in there. And that system, I respect it. I haven't been able to achieve it, but I respect it. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Christy, for being the moms that yes, you are. thank you. They're but, pro probably never gonna leave the bird, kids with us again. But a birdseed beard is pretty cool. It is pretty awesome. All right, how are we gonna end this show? Rhett ventriloquize? Link, that's oh. me. Oh. So, for once, only once, I, I have to be the where dummy you, here. Where do you wanna put my hand? Just pretend that your hand's <laughs> touching okay. me, but don't put it up in anything. Hey Link, how you doing? No, I'm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay, okay, okay. Hey Link, how you doing? I, I want you to end the show. What are you talking about? I don't want to end the show. I'm just a dummy. No, come on now. Give you give yourself some credit. I mean, you 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 do have an odd looking face, but I mean, everyone can tell that. Uh, uh, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. Uh, why don't you just close the show out for us? Okay. Well, really happy that you joined us today, and see this guy over here and that's holding me up. His hand is not in any place that's inappropriate at all. His hand is actually right here because I'm not really a dummy. I'm just a person and we're playing this little thing. <laughs> See you tomorrow.